So it is uh, on work, uh, stakeholder engagement and policy analysis. Uh, to begin with, as we heard so many of the speakers already speak and uh, like Stephanie Salzman has already pointed out in her presentation, uh, currently in the, um, in, the in the discourse of uh, climate change adaptation, non-native trees has been, uh, you know, talked, uh, discussed in a very uh, huge way as a solution uh, in forestry. So adaptive management um, has options as, as uh, Salzman, uh, Salzman's uh, presentation pointed out that um, like planting alternative tree species, uh, which can be, of course, non-native tree species also. Uh, now coming back to the elk trees uh, um, work, the, which uh, we, uh, we were doing uh, under the leadership of Nicola, that is uh, stakeholder engagement and policy awareness. And uh, besides all the uh, workshops and uh, like the national and regional workshops and other um, um, events that was, uh, you know, citizen science events, etc., cetera, uh, which was uh, done to promote uh, the non-native, the co uh, concept of non-native tree species. Uh, we did a stakeholder survey in 2020 uh, with uh, 457 respondents. Uh, here, I'll just again mention that we included Switzerland as it is an intrinsic part of the Alpine space, uh, even though it is not a part of our trees. And then uh, going on to policy analysis, we did expert interviews uh, like uh, with personal interviews with forest policy experts, 30 uh, forest policy experts. Then uh, as Katarina already mentioned, there was a public consultation with 40 respondents, which resulted into a developing of a transnational strategy. So yeah, mm, uh, going for non-native tree species in um, under the climate change scenario, uh, it is not very easy concept. Uh, at first, the, fir uh, the thing about these uh, non-natives is that we have to know about the characteristics uh, and more so their political status uh, that is in, in the form of regulation or guidelines uh, in Europe, as well as in the national and regional uh, arena. So uh, saying that, uh, in the survey, uh, we, uh, we um, on the question of benefits and risk, we see that um, this is this is a slide which has been shared very many times. But uh, today again, I'm sharing it. Like uh, we see that most of the uh, most the majority of the respondents uh, said about non-native tree species as depends. Now. Uh, why was uh, was uh, it was not uh, taken into uh, elaborate discussions like why it, uh, they say depends there can be many factors for it uh, which can which is in one way uh, we see that it is actually very right because as we see that NNTs are very site specific and uh, uh, very subjective. Uh, inv the inv their invasive potential is very subjective. So, uh, uh, because we have heard so many times about uh, very economically viable uh, NNTs like Douglas fir uh, being invasive in certain areas in Europe uh, and their management and eradication uh, measures. So, uh, in a way, it is right that you cannot decide very without uh, further research or uh, without knowing the characteristics of a tree species whether it is it has invasive potential uh, in few uh, in, you know further so uh, and also uh, there is another consideration as i repeat every time that there is a very thin line uh, in the definitions of invasiveness and an nnt because uh, as we'll further understand uh, 
In the same stakeholder survey, from the state, uh, stakeholder survey, we also tried to find out the uh, trade-offs and synergies in the ecosystem services um, related to you know, the perception of uh, invasiveness, the concern of invasiveness. And uh, here we, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, I have analyzed uh, with for all the countries, but I did a multiple correspondence analysis for like quickly for uh, just to see the trade-offs and synergies uh, between the concerns and the um, ecosystem services. And uh, a very clear, you know, clear cut trade-off is seen when it is like, you know, um, when it is high concern for the invasiveness of NNTs there is no, it shows not much effect uh, with provisional ecosystem services like bioenergy and timber, but it has a very clear cut trade off with biodiversity, the native biodiversity, pollination, drinking water, etc. cetera, uh, which is not a very Eureka result. We expected that this is uh, already expected, but again, on the other hand, when you see um, these two, uh, 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 squares here, uh, the responses were not very clear and therefore uh, this uh, situation is not very clear here, but I need to do some further analysis on this. So, yes. Uh, now going ahead to the policy analysis where uh, I, uh, for, uh, I conducted like 30 uh, expert interviews from across all the Alpine space countries uh, with forest policy experts. Uh, there was a limitation because when I was searching for a non uh, NNT expert, um, I hardly found them or maybe it is my limitation or um, there are still to be experts in non-native tree species uh, looking into both risks and benefits. So uh, when, uh, when we, um, Okay, this is, uh, this is of course from the stakeholder survey from the 457 respondents, more than 80% said that uh, they are aware of the policies on NNTs, which is really interesting. And going further, when we ask them to mention the most common regulation, we see that the EU regulation 2014 uh, is one of the most recorded. Then comes the Nature Conservation Act, EU Biodiversity Strategy, uh, Alpine Convention, National Forest Act, etc., which is again very obvious. Uh, when we look into it, uh, of course, uh, in the policy report, you will find that we have uh, gone through every, uh, like all the country-wise uh, uh, and uh, uh, legislations and guidelines, and as well as recommendations. But here, I'm just just uh, to show you the narrative of non-native tree species. Uh, here are the European forest legislations on NNTs. And we see that every one of it is in the context and a context of invasiveness. And uh, we don't see here any uh, mention of benefits of like manage, uh, ben, uh, management for benefits. So, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, like the Natura 2000, uh, which uh, uh, during the interviews, we found that 40% of Slovenia is a Natura 2000 protected area and uh, it has very stringent me measures for the uh, promotion of non NNTs, uh, like uh, they are strictly restricted. Uh, so uh, we go ahead to uh, another question uh, uh, of the interviews, um, which is like the three statements together actually, like are existing policies sufficient or new legislations necessary. So what we find from these two um, figures, you will, um, I'll just summarize it, is that um, uh, the existing, uh, most of the respondents said, experts said that the existing legislations are um, not sufficient, but new legislations are not necessary. And there was an unanimous consensus that, uh, 
you know there should be amend there can be amendments in the in the uh, uh, for uh, like you know uh, in uh, amending the uh, uh, existing existing legislation sorry existing legislations um, amending them with uh, uh, you know, guide, uh, guidelines and other uh, other uh, recommendations for the uh, to look into the benefits of non-native tree species also. So that that was a clear cut uh, uh, answer that no um, new legislations are not necessary and the existing legislations should be uh, amended and strengthened. So this is just a summary representation of all the countries. Uh, and where most of them says that new legislations are not necessary, but uh, Italy, there is this uh, statement saying new le national legislations is necessary and regional legislations also need to be strengthened. Whereas in Switzerland, we find that the uh, experts are of the view that new national legislation is not necessary and cantons are already equipped with required processes. So it goes this way and okay, so uh, this, uh, this is uh, really interesting because uh, recently I, um, last week actually, I uh, gave, I had a talk at the International Forest Policy Meet and the first uh, keynote, uh, the keynote speech was about narratives. So it really, um, uh, stru uh, struck me because the uh, narratives of non-native tree species is uh, what is about invasiveness, about risks, about danger. And here uh, it's uh, really interesting that there is this uh, Charles Elton, who is an eco he was, uh, was an ecologist in 1950s, who he actually introduced the militaristic invasive metaphor to describe exotic plants and animals. So here, oh, why it's moving. Um, and, um, here uh, in this article, very interesting article, it's time to stop thinking that all non-natives are evil by Emma Maris for the Net Geo 2014. It's a very interesting article because it says that climate change is making it harder even to decide who the invaders are. So this, I'm, uh, I'm uh, like really uh, amazed actually to hear Bart because in Bart's presentation, we find that, uh, you know, even natives can be, sometimes invasive so uh, which we have seen uh, evidently in some cases so it's very interesting how the narrative is built uh, about a certain species and therefore in order to break and i think elk trees is a very uh, you know interesting project which is helping to bridge this uh, gap and and to change the narrative of nnts um, in the coming future uh, so I'll just finish it off with the, rep we have two reports online now, the policy analysis report, which gives you a very detailed, uh, 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 like summary of uh, whatever we uh, uh, like worked on in the, uh, you know, with the pol policy analysis in all the uh, six Alpine space countries. Then there is the stakeholder uh, re uh, knowledge report where we, uh, I have detailed description about how we methods about how we conducted this uh, survey, what are the results of the survey. Uh, and of course, Katharina has already spoken about the transnational strategy, which gave us uh, five goals along with certain recommendations. And the whole, um, and the whole story is uploaded as a report in the Alptree's website. Uh, now coming uh, to a conclusion, for policy harmonization challenges and gaps from all the uh, different presentations that we heard today and of course from the work of Altries, we say we can say that the main uh, points can be overcoming knowledge gaps which is for the definition uh, we really need some solid definitions so that uh, not only for the researchers and also uh, for for the whole population of stakeholders because we don't have time to go into jargons so we just need clear definitions for what is an nnt what is an invasive uh, um, nnt and so on and so forth 
Then updated and verified aggregate data is about NNTs is still very rare. So that is very important. Then there is the language barrier, which I also uh, personally uh, uh, encountered during uh, my research because um, in all the European countries, there are different languages and the main guidelines and recommendations are you know, given in their own local language. Uh, and therefore one cannot uh, bring it to. So I think uh, the knowledge hub of Altrees and also the whole uh, documentation process of Altrees is very important. Uh, we have it, we should have it all in the same, you know, uh, cluster. And then financing entities. Uh, again, um, I heard in one of the uh, presentations about financing entities, how important it is. Uh, of course, it's Giovanna uh, who had pointed it out. Uh, then uh, supporting the research on entities, which is uh, really important. It is the most important for us researchers as well as for the stakeholders. Bridging the gaps in perception between conservationists and practitioners, because while conservationists have this view of, uh, uh, you know, having the native that native, uh, of course, native species should be there, uh, should be always promoted. But in the scenario of climate change, the changing pattern uh, of uh, climate and ecology, then we have to be open towards, uh, you know, welcoming the NNTs. But of course, after proper evaluation and research, uh, harmonized terminology, that's the same thing all across Europe, which is very important for communication. And then another very important uh, aspect is the seed source, which is an important consideration of in NNTs, like for good growth and vitality of forests, like you have to know where the See where does what the seed source is, where are these seedlings coming from, so it is very important. Uh, uh, so uh, Katarina had uh, shared that uh, this uh, this slide here, it's a very, uh, I took it as a screenshot, so it is not very well done. So this is a, uh, in 2019, when the project started, uh, uh, like when uh, everyone was asked what you think about uh, when you heard your NNT. So this was the, uh, this where, where was the response and here, this is 2021. This was in the policy workshop in um, March. So here we find, of course, uh, I mean, here we find something which is like as if we now understand or in the process of understanding what NNTs are. So this is uh, like a very um, interesting output. So thank you very much. I hope I have kept the time and yeah, thank you. Thank you.